Hello Thrivers, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSER accredited exercise physiologist. If you've been impacted by a diagnosis of breast cancer and you wanna do as many positive proactive things towards reclaiming your mental, physical and emotional health, then you've come to the right place. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about how to perform correct self-lymphatic drainage massage technique if you have existing or early onset lymphedema after breast cancer. If you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Leave a comment in the section below because I would love to hear from you and find out what topics around breast cancer you would like more information on. So without further ado, let's get into this video, self-lymphatic drainage technique after breast cancer. Let's just quickly establish what is self-lymphatic drainage massage. Self-lymphatic drainage massage is a technique that we can use to clear away excess lymphatic fluid on the upper limb or in the breast, but we'll do a separate video on clearing breast lymphedema or breast oedema on our own body, or we can have somebody else perform lymphatic drainage on us. That's known as manual lymphatic drainage. So if you're performing self-lymphatic drainage, you're doing it on yourself. If somebody else is performing manual lymphatic drainage, then it's another person doing it to your arm or your breast. Now, how has the technique of self-lymphatic drainage massage changed? Firstly, let me talk about how we used to perform the massage technique. So we used to use really light pressure and we also used to try to drain the fluid from the upper limb across to the either opposite armpit where we assumed there were intact lymph nodes or we would drain down the side of the person's body towards their groin where there's other lymph node fields. Now in 2019, an amazing group of researchers at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia, found that not only can we perform self-lymphatic drainage more effectively by applying firm pressure, but they also found that regardless of the number of lymph nodes removed in the armpit, that you've got more effectiveness of drainage by draining to the same armpit on the same arm that's got lymphedema on it. So what we mean by this is rather than dragging the fluid from this side, say if you've got lymphedema on your left arm, across to your right arm if you've still got intact lymph nodes, but rather draining your left arm to your left armpit and vice versa if it's the opposite arm. So this blows a few people's minds because they're probably thinking, how am I going to drain my lymphedema if I've got no lymph nodes existing in my armpit? But this research found that the most effective pathway lymphatically for people to utilize was the same armpit with for, of the arm that has the lymphedema. In the study, uh, it, it, was, it, it was an overwhelming majority. It was like 67% of the women in the study who'd had breast cancer, who then had lymphedema as a result of their breast cancer treatment, were found to have more effective drainage on the what we call the ipsilateral arm. Uh, armpit, essentially the same armpit with the lymphedema on that side. So regardless of the number of lymph nodes removed in your armpit, it is more effective to drain your lymphedema to the same armpit of the same side and apply firm pressure. Let's get into how you actually perform self-lymphatic drainage massage. So this can be done sitting, standing, lying down, whatever your preference is. I would advise you make yourself comfortable, relax, take a few deep breaths. Step number one is to stimulate your lymph node field, even if all of your lymph nodes have been removed. So you're going to raise your arm, close your four fingers, place them in your armpit and per perform circular deep massage. We want this massage to be firm. So I've just moved my camera back so I can demonstrate step number two a little bit more clearly for everybody. What we're aiming to achieve here is to clear any lymphedema through the upper arm section. So we're not gonna start down at the hand and the forearm and push all of that fluid all the way back up the arm because it can create a bottleneck effect. So what we're actually gonna start with is by clearing just the upper arm section. So I just get my patients to close their hands like so and then you're just gonna apply, apply firm pressure Pressure. Now I should just quickly mention that historically we didn't used to use any sort of cream to do this self-lymphatic drainage massage because the pressure used to be so light that if we did use a cream we'd almost ice skate over the top of the skin. 
Whereas now, because we're using firm pressure, we actually do encourage patients to use cream. So I am most often using just something as basic as, as sorbeline. I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So good old sorbeline, which you can buy very cheaply at most major supermarkets, certainly in Australia. Um, ultimately, if you can't get your hands on sorbeline, then use any sort of moisturizer that is not going to be an irritant to your skin. Um, so anything basic that's probably water-based uh, rather than oil-based is better and nothing that causes any sort of skin reaction. So that is step number two. So we're gonna clear this upper arm section, but when we do this, we wanna treat the arm like a cylinder. So make sure that you're not just going through the front of the arm, that you're moving around to the back of the arm, the underside of the arm, and continually putting firm pressure and draining that fluid towards the armpit. As I mentioned before, there is another lymphatic pathway that a lot of people have, um, and they can utilize by pushing um, lymphedema over the top of the shoulder into this supraclavicular um, area of the of the shoulder so when you get the fluid up to the top of the arm you can certainly um, shift this over the top of the of the shoulder okay I should just mention with step number two that that may take you know half the amount of time of your total massage I'll talk about how long you should actually massage for in just a minute step number three is now clearing the hand and the forearm so what we want to do is start with the back of the hand and move through the forearm. You want to include any excess fluid that's sitting around your fingertips, um, in between your fingers. So you can use this sort of technique where you are dragging in between the fingers. Again, firm pressure is totally safe and recommended. Um, and we want to um, move that fluid down through the forearm and, and up through the whole length of the arm. Again, always draining towards that same side armpit and aiming to get as much lymphatic fluid moving through the course of the arm as possible. You'll notice as I'm doing this technique that I'm lifting my arm up. So one of the tips I've got for anybody who's doing self-lymphatic drainage massage is that arm elevation while you're performing the massage is going to enhance the effect of the massage. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, of course, is that if you're doing this self-lymphatic drainage technique for minutes on end and you've got a sore shoulder or you're holding your shoulder up and it's getting sore, you may wanna consider placing yourself in a position by which you can place your hand on a stable object so that your shoulder is supported and you don't start getting shoulder pain because you're just holding your arm up to enhance the massage. Now the final step of self-lymphatic drainage is actually to re-stimulate your lymphatic field in your armpit again. So just as we started with this massage, we are now going to raise our arm above our head, close our four fingers and repeat that um, circular firm massage for 10 to 20 seconds under the armpit and then also through this supraclavicular fossa area as well. So that's the final step of the massage. So how often and how long should self-emphatic drainage massage be performed? This is a question I get often asked in the clinic. And the way I pitch this to patients is based around logistics and practicality because let's face it, if you're a patient going through breast cancer and then you've also been diagnosed with lymphedema, self-lymphatic drainage is just another job you've now got to do. And we've got to keep in mind that self-lymphatic drainage is just one thing that you can do to affect your lymphedema. There are so many other elements of treatment that you can use to influence lymphedema such such as compression garments, weight loss, exercise, elevation of the limb and skin care. So if we put all our eggs in one basket and spend all day doing self-lymphatic drainage, um, I just don't think that's practical. And then patients don't tend to comply with that anyway, because it just becomes too much of an overwhelming task. Now, if we're aiming for you know, research standards, what they have found is that if you perform self-lymphatic drainage for 30 to 45 minutes, that there tends to be a plateau in the movement of the lymphedema around that sort of 30 to 45 minute mark. However, if someone's performing self-lymphatic drainage every single day, sometimes twice a day, then potentially it might be better to pitch this in a way that it's you know short, sweet bursts of, of frequent flushing of that lymphatic system. So so 
so if someone has early onset lymphedema and there is barely any fluid on their arm, then I'm often saying to them, do a couple of stints of self-lymphatic drainage a day of five to 10 minutes, because with early onset lymphedema, we are actually aiming to reverse it. I'll talk about this topic in a separate video. If someone has got an excessive amount of lymphedema on their arm, then sure, they could potentially spend a longer time flushing that fluid away. So just keep in mind that the way I'm pitching this to my patients and what my recommendation is, is to do what is practical for you. But the most important aspect I can see in self-lymphatic drainage is that it's done regularly rather than for one long period and then for the rest of the week, you just can't fit it in because it's too overwhelming a task. Another question I often get asked in my clinic is whether or not self-lymphatic drainage can actually prevent lymphedema. Research has shown that lymphatic massage does not necessarily prevent lymphedema. Because breast cancer patients, again, have so much on their plate, it is worth knowing that doing self-lymphatic drainage as a potential preventative me measure towards getting lymphedema may not necessarily be effective. When should we not perform self-lymphatic drainage? The main time we shouldn't perform self-lymphatic drainage massage is when we have an active infection in our body. And that doesn't necessarily just have to be an infection on the arm. It could also be an infection on your leg, anywhere else in your body. So if you have any signs or symptoms of an infection, then stop all self-lymphatic drainage techniques until you've been assessed by your local GP or your medical team for breast cancer. Finally, some tips for self-lymphatic drainage. Now, when you're performing self-lymphatic drainage, a couple of things that I recommend is deep breathing and elevating your arm, as I showed you a little while ago. So the major lymphatic pump in your body sits just next to your diaphragm. So when we take a deep breath in, this enhances lymphatic flow. As I mentioned before, if you elevate the arm while you're performing self-lymphatic drainage, gravity will assist by taking the fluid down towards the center of your body even more so, but remember to support your shoulder with a stable object near you while you're doing elevation and performing the, the massage technique. As I mentioned before, using a moisturizer that's non-irritable on your skin to do the massage is, is recommended. Otherwise you can create a drag on the skin. Another little tip is that a lot of patients will tell me that once they have used moisturizer on their arm to perform self-lymphatic drainage, it's really difficult to then get a compression garment on over that moisturized skin. So one of the best times a day that I can recommend to do self-lymphatic drainage is right before you go to bed at night, because most people aren't going to be putting their compression garment back on just before they go to bed. And then you've got a nicely moisturized arm getting into bed. You don't have to worry about putting your sleeve on and you've done your self-lymphatic drainage and moisturizing for the day. Another tip is to pick a time of day or an activity during the day when you can perform your self-lymphatic drainage so that you don't actually have to think about when you are going to do that massage. Self-lymphatic drainage is a bit like flossing your teeth. If you don't have a set time of the day that you know you're going to floss your teeth, it often doesn't get done. So pick a time or pick an activity like breakfast or lunch or before you pick the kids up from school to do your self-lymphatic drainage so then you don't have to think about when you are going to fit, fit that into your day and it just gets done. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and got some great information from it. I release a new video every week, so stay tuned for my next video. If you've enjoyed this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to hear what topics around breast cancer you would like more information on. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're having a great week wherever you are. I'm Jen McKenzie, the Breast Cancer Physio. I'll see you next time.